Memorial Project has researched 30 documented cases of racial lynchings in the county dating back to the 1880s. Members want to put a monument in a downtown park. Sam Litzinger, CBS News. Are you more than $10,000 in debt? Feel like you're on a never-ending treadmill, staying in one place and never getting ahead with those minimum payments? Don't let the credit card companies bully you anymore. There are programs in place to help you get free of your debt, and you don't have to pay the entire amount you owe. The program at Total Financial Freedom can help you get debt-free in months instead of decades. Call Total Financial now at 800-899-8922. That's 800-899-8922. Ready to create your own income with your own home-based business where there's no such thing as getting laid off? If a billionaire entrepreneur spent five years and $20 million searching for the next big trend, wouldn't you want to know what he found? If you're serious about making money from home without having to leave home, then write this down. www.goherenext.com. You decide your income. Get the facts now. Goherenext.com. The following program is a paid presentation. The views and or opinions expressed do not necessarily reflect those of the staff and management of KWAM. So tune in for advice and news every Saturday night if you like the truth. We stand up for your rights and rules. Saturdays at 5, we'll fight for you. Skid and GQ for LGBTQ. We keep it simple, but keep it equal. Skid and GQ for LGBTQ. We keep it simple, but keep it equal. Blood the whistle. 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 Yeah. yeah. Ow! This is the S to the K to the double E to the T to the E to the R. And I'm sitting with the G to the Q. And she's about to fall out that chair. <laughs> and we're in the house today on this beautiful Saturday. And we're fired up. Hello, somebody. somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sitting here fighting with my, my headphones. Yep. Fighting with my headphones. Technical difficulty. My usual Saturday. Here we go. I think I'm queued up now. Yeah, I can hear. So what's going on, Memphis, Tennessee, and Radio Land, surrounding areas, and everybody in the sound of my voice, social media land. We live on Facebook. If you want to jump in the studio with us and watch us live over here, we're going to be on TUV Magazine Instagram page in a few minutes as soon as I can get it set up. But uh, it's Saturday, 5 o'clock, and you know what time it is. And we are here, KWAM 990 and FM 107.9. This is the Unleashed Voice radio show where we aim to educate, empower, and enrich the community. And we hope that during the broadcast of our radio show that we say something, say something, something to change your mind or to inform you. So, David, do you have a rant? Yes. Okay. What's on your mind, son? Donald Trump attacks another (laughs) African-American lawmaker. (laughs) He calls Baltimore a disgusting, rat, and rodent-infested mess. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like um, is, Puerto Rico, right? Is a racist. He called Baltimore a disgusting, rat, rodent-infested mess. He told Representative Elijah Cummings, who's the <laughs> chair of the Oversight Committee, uh, if he would take care of his own backyard and worry about Baltimore, everything would be better. <laughs> Well, is he right? Oh, Lord have mercy. So what, what about the area that he uh, uh, was elected to cover? What, what, is that his district? He can't do everything. He's going to do small things in certain, in certain areas. He doesn't have votes to get money and all those things. So, matter of fact, I think Baltimore is in the United States. So if it's a, uh, a rat, rodent, disgusted, infested mess, maybe the president should send some money there or some aid to help fix up the city. Did he send some money to to uh, Puerto Rico? It is in the United States, and so I Puerto think, Rico is too. I think he should, uh, if it's in that kind of mess, and those people are suffering because most of those people are black and brown, and uh, this is like the fourth lawmaker that the fourth progressive uh, lawmaker of color that he's attacked, and so uh, 
Well, he told the four. He told the squad. You know, he picked on the squad. Those four women, and now he's attacking this Elijah uh, Cummings. So this is five people. Uh, it's a good thing he didn't tell him to go back to Africa too. Don't worry, he will tell them to go back to Africa. But uh, to all the stalkers and listeners, if you want to call in at nine zero one two six zero five nine two six again nine zero one. Uh, two six zero five nine two six. I feel like arguing today. Donald Trump is a racist. Let's go ahead and, and let's argue. So, let's set it off. Because I said it, and I know y'all gonna call in. You're listening. He is a racist. So call in, and I'm ready for you today. Uh, let's get the party started because it doesn't make any sense for uh. uh go ahead, and transfer. Let's set it off. Let's get it started. Uh-oh. It's on. Uh-oh. They keep playing. Ding ding ding. You got a. You got a. Can you put Michael Buffer? Let's get ready to rumble. Well, then Donald Trump, he said this district is considered the worst in the United States and no human being wants to live there. So if it's the worst district in the United States and no human being wants to live there, why don't you send aid to help the people in that district or in that state? I think it's in the United States of America. So, and matter of fact, hold on, let me say this. And then he just got approved by the Supreme Court today to waste $2.5 billion on the wall. So how about you take yesterday? How about you take that $2.5 billion uh, dollars you're taking out the military budget and send it to Baltimore and help those people in Baltimore if it's such a uh, uh, worst district in the United States and no one wants to live there. So the mayor of Baltimore, Bernard Young, he blasted President Trump. He came back with a comment on Twitter uh, of, because of what he said to Elijah Cummings. And he said that, uh, the president is a brutal bully. He is. And that his... <laughs> uh, <laughs> this man here is something else. So the mayor said it's completely unacceptable for the political leader of our country to denigrate a vibrant American city like Baltimore to viciously attack U.S. Representative Elijah McCormick Cummings, who is a patriot, patriot and a hero. And that um, he said that cities like Baltimore or, or and that the comments and the rhetoric, it was hurtful and dangerous to people that he sworn to represent and that he won't stand for it as the mayor of the alleged leader of the free world attack our great city and said he's disappointed the people of Baltimore and the country and to the world. Well, I blame all of those. And I, I don't use this. I, I don't talk. I don't like to talk about my uh, elderly people, but our Congress and our Senate looks like a nursing home and all those people need to retire. <laughs> and you need some progressive people up there to impeach Donald Trump and you need some progressive people to run for office because our current city council is like a nursing home. And that's why I'm running uh, for city council. It's way up. You need progressive people to fight these bullets back and to stand up to these people because I put them on. They, they, they playing on the phone. Go ahead, transfer them. Let me see what they got to say. They hung up again. They didn't well, you can transfer them next time. They want to say something. He said, um, yeah, they, you, you, Donald Trump's a bully, a bully and a racist. So call in 901-260-5926. So uh, what, what, what's been happening, like, across the U.S. Uh, is something uh, that happened right uh, in Ole Miss, right down the road. They, um, what do you call it, uh, when you tear down a, a, a monument? It's a, uh, it's desecrated. A, yeah. Desecrated Emmett Till's uh, memorial sign mm-hmm. uh, on the site where he was killed. And it was three uh, young white males from University of Mississippi, Ole Miss, and uh, they've been supposedly suspended from school and the fraternity they were involved in and blah, 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 blah. But you wonder why this continued to happen in 2019. And uh, you said something very poignant uh, uh, yesterday, Davian, uh, in regards to uh, races and racism and why it's so, why it's just out now. You know, it's like, it's, it, it used to be kind of... Uh, unspoken but now you have people to just really come up and just just speak it and i i put up i put it up on facebook yesterday why do these people hate black people so much why because we are the original gatekeepers we are the original gods we built this country and we are the uh people that god chose to lead and they have done everything in their power to reverse that and they have used and abused us and they have put this white western theology 
into play and brainwashed our people. And that's why they uh, are inferior to us. That's why they hate us. That's why they want to be like us because we are the chosen people. Even though we suffer a lot and go through a lot, they have tried everything in their power to get rid of us. But that was a prophecy. And they have not been successful. And that's why they envy black folks so much until black folk realize that uh, we are chosen and realize that this white Western theology that they have put in our mind is not the truth. We will never grow as a people, but we have a call. You're trying to get me crunk already. <laughs> call it. You're live on the live is radio show on KWAM 990 talk radio. What's on your mind? And I'm all the way live. How, how y'all doing people? Brother hey, David. Hey, what's going on, Dave? Y'all got it. Y'all got it. You know, um, I have a new, um, term I'm, I'm using title for Donald Trump. I call him three P. What's the three P? Putin's puppet president. <laughs> so I'm going to see how that roll. I think I might even get some t-shirts made. <laughs> and after God, what I think, um, I think what it's all about is the fact that this country is going to become a multicultural dominant country. I yes. think I've said that before on this, on this, on this, um, on your show. Mm -hmm. And, um, Frankly, I, I just don't, I hate to depress y'all, you know, I, I, it's I not like depressing. It's, it's like, the truth. Oh. It's the truth. But go ahead. Now we, we came, we came to argue today. <laughs> okay. <Well. laughs> we hadn't had a good one in a while, so it's time. <laughs> but, um, no, he is a racist, but it doesn't mean anything. Mm -mm. It doesn't mean anything. I'm going to tell you why it doesn't mean anything. Because. We have been, as a people, beaten down so much by our own people. Yes. Until we're starting just not to believe anybody. Yes. And we're just starting to just go with the flow. Yes. We, just, we said, well, voting doesn't matter. Yes. Because we've seen what happens when you have somebody in office for 17 and a half years, then they leave for 10, and then they come back and say they got a new plan. Man, please. Well, <laughs> my plan is not to vote for your yo. Hello. I'm about to cut. Hello. Not to vote for you. Hello. So my thing is, is, is that they ain't got to. The races don't have to beat us up because right. I own them beating the hell out of. Them. I mean, every day, every every minute, every look, I won't change. Yes. And I'm willing to try anybody that can that can that can um, speak truth to power. Yes. And offer some challenge. I, now don't start talking differently once you get in. We we used to that, right? Mm -hmm. See, we got to have we got to have. In two thousand, I said on a radio show. Excuse me from going back and all these. I said the word the, the, the word for African Americans for the, for the new millennium should be infrastructure. Yes. Now now you look at this whole thing locally about the election. If and you look at the candidates running for mayor. Mm -hmm. You got one no. You got one not even maybe, and you got one yes. Mm -hmm. But the but the but if the maybe if the, if the maybe gets in, I mean, if the maybe comes in second place, Doctor Harrison, then damn, what the hell is are we saying if the yes comes in third as a people? Mm. I mean, they they have really dumbed us down to thinking that if if a black man beats the hell out of you, that's better. I got one better. A white man beat the hell out of you, sir. I I. I I went to one of my friend's house. My signs will be in next week, and I was getting my 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 strategic placing of the sign. I saw a damn Ford sign in a woman yard. What has and I'm gonna say it? I don't care. What has Edmund Ford Senior done in the community for you to put a sign in your yard to support this man? That's right. That's all I That's have to right. say. In the last ten years, right. what has he done That's right. to put That's a right. you put a sign in your yard to support this man? <laughs> Why do, why do, why do, first of all, well, I know why the Fords think that they, that, that they are entitled. Well, they're not the only one. They're not the only one that think that, you know. Well, that's true. We have a that's lot of true. them that they think that the name for namesake, that they, these seats get passed down to them. That's so, correct. Okay. That's correct. You, you are correct, but I can tell you what, nobody has a brand in this community like the Ford. You are correct about that. Now I got you right, sister. But man, that that Ford brand, man, they don't like they don't like Chevy, they don't like Fiat. No, nope. but but that Ford, anything come up, yes. automatically they're competing for a race. Yes. But see, I but mean, see, David, that was that was like before social media, be, uh -huh. before people start paying attention. 
And see, what they really thinking that people still ignorant. And that mm-hmm. we still, when we see Ford, we see Ohio. But see, mm-hmm. Ohio been gone. So Man, that's where gone. all that come from. That 9th Congressional yep. District that Harold Ford ran. Then the junior got it. So then the other one started mm-hmm. jumping in. But he gone now. Yep. So yep. you still can't. And, and people have been ignorant to just see the name on the, 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 the ballot and push it without knowing anything about it because they, they want to say that this come from, this is good for the African-American community, but I just ride around some of the districts that they oh. held seats over. D- then yeah. that, 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 that your receipts. Yep. Yep. See, so, so I, I don't, I don't get it, man. I, you know, I walk past my, my, t- towards my mother's house and the grass is as tall, taller than I am. Mm-hmm. And apartment building. I mean, I don't, I don't understand why we what we call effectiveness because we, you know, we we just gotten into a mode that if it's just black, then that's all we want. Yeah. If, if, if it's just black, that's enough. Let me before I go, let me compliment you, my brother. Man, you out there working that thing. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> look, look, man, you ought to get paid for that. <laughs> so hopefully, you will. So you're at, oh, about to say it, about to say that word again, boy. <laughs> You out there working, man. So, and I'm gonna tell you something. I love it. I love it because you out there telling the people we got a choice. Yes. We have a choice in this matter. Yes. You don't have to just go with the flow. You don't have to go with a name with just a name. Listen to what my offer is, mm-hmm. and, and, and then and, and folks in his district hold his be- hold his behind accountable afterwards. Absolutely. I, and I, and I, whenever I get an opportunity, I say that all the time. Because at the, at, at that, that's the theme of our campaign, running with the people. I can't run ahead of you. I can't run behind you. I got to run with you. And so that's the whole premise of the campaign, to run with the people, to push the people's agenda. Because like I told somebody, how can I, how can I encourage home ownership in the district when we have 90-some thousand people who live in the district? And out of that 90,000... 17,000 are homeowners. And out of that 17,000 who are homeowners, you have less than 8,000 African-American people who own homes. How can I encourage wow. home ownership in District 6 if I don't own a home? And many of my uh, 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 constituents who are running, they're not homeowners. But I'm a homeowner in District 6. I'm vested in District 6. I'm a small business owner in District 6. I pay taxes in District 6. I went to college in District 6. I went to elementary school. So I'm vested in District 6. How can you run for a seat in a district when you're not vested? Teach, brother. Teach. And so, and I got, I have a problem. I had one of my constituents at an event tried to blast me about a policy. And I was like, dude, time out. You can't preach a policy when you're not even doing that policy. Mm-hmm. So, Expound. So... If you're going to preach a policy like about that home ownership, if you're going to imp- implement programs to educate our people on home ownership, you have to be a homeowner. Yeah. You, you, yeah. You, how can you teach somebody how to drive if you don't know how to drive? Mm. Yeah. So my yeah. point is this. Oh, yeah. Don't come into the district shooting all that fluff fluff talking about what you, what you want to do. I'm doing it, and I want to help other people to do it, and I want to make it better because I was a victim of predatory lending. They wow. preyed on me because I was a young homeowner, black, in District 6, and they preyed on me. And so, they know no better. And they know no better. So I want to help other young black homeowners or people who are interested in buying homes become educated and not become a victim of predatory lending or these balloon these balloon interest rates loans and all the above. So, you know, I'm vested in District 6. I own in District 6. I've been here all my life. And so District 6 is me. I'm the soul of District 6. So I'm not talking about what I heard. I'm talking about what I know and what I've experienced. So that's another well, reason me, why I'm running for office in District 6. Let, let me say this in closing. Number one, um, my, my my website, as, as much as I've been crawling, is going to be live next next week. Mm-hmm. Sure. And, and number two, sister, if we'll see in October whether you're right. Yes. And I hope that you are right. Yes. I hope that we are that their social media will be used as a tool of power yes. and empowerment, you mm-hmm. know, r- rather than a place to just to talk back and forth and check people and do all of that, that we utilize it for power. Because as I told a, a businessman yesterday, I think we talked, I said, you know, people forget that Ross Perot was a billionaire 
became a billionaire based on government contracts. Yes. Yep. He's not the only people, one. It's a lot of people here doing the same thing right What about Dick now. Cheney? What about who? Dick Cheney. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Correct. He owned all the military equipment that we bought. See? See? Mm -hmm. Don't tell me that, that politics doesn't matter. Don't, it, it matters all the way around. Yes. You know, and, and one other, oh, I just, I promise you, this is my last, this is my last thing. Mm -hmm. What angers me most about, about Dr. Harrington and his race is this. I was there. I know people inside the campaign. You can't, you can't tell me what I don't know. I know. I know people who were very close in that campaign. The folks that elected Dr. Harrington the first time were the lower middle class and poor African Americans. And in 17 and a half years, you couldn't even make sure that you can get those people to, on a bus to the job on time. Yeah. Now, you talk to me about effective political leadership if you want to. Yeah. I'm in North Memphis. I know what to say and do to you. Y'all yeah. have a good day. Thank you. All right. We, we got to take a quick commercial break. Uh, we got a 525-hour. <laughs> Y'all done got crunk today. Ah. This politics off the nails. Hey, this is the Unleashed Voice Radio Show. And uh, we're going to keep, keep getting crunk some more. So don't uh, change that dial. Better yet, tell your friend to tune in uh, to us on Facebook and Instagram. TUV Magazine on Instagram and David Clemens on Facebook. We'll be right back. I like when they shake it, shake it. I like when they grind real slow. I like when they almost make it. Tell dad I'm so homo. Lights off, doors shut. Tall, dark, clean cut. Thick with a bubble butt. Yo, mama, I like boys. I like Choices is a nonprofit sexual health clinic in Midtown Memphis. We accept 10 care and offer patient assistance to help pay for needed services. Choices is proud to provide comprehensive reproductive health services in an LGBTQ affirming environment. We offer a wide range of services such as general wellness, fertility assistance, STI testing and treatment, reproductive health services for people living with HIV, including PrEP and PEP, birth control, Gardasil vaccinations, abortion services, miscarriage carriage management and services for trans and gender non-conforming people including hormone replacement therapy everybody needs choices Let's talk about sex, baby. in memphis condoms are free from planned parenthood and their friends all over town nothing sexier than free so check out freecondomsmemphis.org and get some let's talk about sex let's talk about sex want to talk about sex Talk about condoms at freecondomsmemphis.org. Get some before you get some. Freecondomsmemphis.org. Let's talk about sex, baby. has become the third leading cause of death among African Americans between the ages of 25 and 34. Even more surprising is the fact that this disease has become the leading cause of death for African American women between the ages of 25 and 34. The spread of HIV AIDS is the single greatest health crisis currently confronting African Americans. Join the Cathedral Praise Church of Memphis Incorporated each Sunday at 12.30 p.m. for our Spirit-filled worship service and each Wednesday at 6.30 p.m. for our Bible study. You do not want to miss these Power Pack services. We are a church for all people, and we welcome you as we transform the Memphis culture. The church is located inside Bun Presbyterian Church at 561 South Prescott Street, Memphis, Tennessee. I'm Dr. Darnell Goose, Jr., Senior Pastor of the Cathedral Praise Church of Memphis Incorporated, and I hope to see you there. This is the city. This is their story. Some names have been changed, and so many lives have been changed too. They're going to give you the facts, just the facts. Some call this a city of crime. When they're done, it's going to be the city that cares a lot. This is the city, Memphis, Tennessee, where fearless, inspired, unfired, hungry rabble of revolutionaries has transformed hearts and minds. Not with weapons, but with their own brand of compassion, integrity, and hard work. All they're asking is for you to join their movement. It's easy to join with a donation of $20, $50, or $100. And 
It's all for the nonprofit organization Relationships Unleashed. With this donation, you will help enhance the three core principles of education, empowerment, and enrichment to the LGBTQ community and its allies. Go to www.relationshipunleashed.com on the World Wide Web, relationshipunleashed.com. All donations are tax deductible. Come on, join the movement. By the way, I don't need a badge or a gun. I carry a microphone, bub. That print in them sweats, tell them girls, thank you next. I like when it text me sexy pics of them like them abs. When there's six of them, tell them girls, I'm sorry. And we're back. This is the live show on KWAM 9 Out of Talk Radio. This is the Unleashed Voice Radio Show. We educate, empower, enrich the community. Go get your copy of the July August edition of TUV Magazine. You can subscribe at TUVMAG.com. On the cover of this great, great magazine is Julian Walker. And he, we have an exclusive interview of this actor, activist, and author. Get your copy. Get your copy. You can go to Bayou Grill, Side Street, Otherland's Coffee Shop, Cash Saver. Um, what else? Side Street. I said that. You said Side Street? I said that. Uh, 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 go to Out Memphis. You can go to Planned Parenthood. You can go to Choices. Choices. You can go to uh, somewhere else. I left on my oh, Crosstown. Uh, we have been to Crosstown Concord. Uh, when you walk through the door, go to the left in that restaurant. Or uh, you can go to TUV Mag website and become mm-hmm. a subscriber mm-hmm. for one ninety nine. We'll ship them out plus shipping. We'll ship them to you every other month. Mm-hmm. We got a, a a good issue out. I, it's, I love when they come out. And uh, this one is really nice. I like this. Mm-hmm. Well put together. Well, so go well. good go job, back, Gwen. Good go job. back Cash Saver on Madison. Get you a copy. They're going to run out. I'm going to have to go back and restock them probably like today. And uh, like I said, go so get your copy. So this is Todrick Hall right here. Uh, yeah, on page uh, 19. Yeah. So get you a copy. Get you a copy. Get you a copy of this great magazine. We got some in D.C. where Racine got some in D.C. We have mine in Nashville. We have in other parts of the United States. It's in 36 cities. So get you a copy of this great magazine. It's available online, a digital magazine as well. So go to the website, TUVMAG.com. This is our July, August edition. Our September and October edition is coming up, and it's going to be good. That's going to be our political issue. It's going to be great. And so, uh, like I said, we're in this thing to win it, and so we got stuff to do, and if you are a candidate for local uh, races here in the city, we are doing a political issue. You get with us and get in our magazine. Our magazine circulates throughout the city. People see our magazine. You want to see your race, your uh, district in the magazine, hit us up at uh, TUVMAG.com or go to info at TUV or hit us up directly on social media and get your campaign information in the magazine because yours truly will have his campaign information in my our magazine so get with us because we are doing it our media marketing firm is the unleashed voice and we're back great job great job uh so you don't have to do your live reads anymore no okay no we'll talk about that later all right, all right, all right. in the words of uh 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 who said uh uh what's that i can tell you the term no color purple sophia Hell no. Okay, so I just wanted to know that uh, you got uh, Equifast money out there. Jump on that site, get your 125. I just sent mine in. Well, my credit. <laughs> well, you know, they had that big breach, so they uh-huh. had to do that settlement. So without any proof, you can either do uh, three years of credit monitoring or you can ask for uh, $125. So I filed mine. Mm-hmm. We know my trick. So um, what I found about uh, uh, alarming you know, it's it just been like one thing after another uh, this whole whole week. Like, when is going to stop? And just kind of make you not even want to listen to the news, you know, because everything's just sad. And so it, it, it kind of started with the, the Sharia Wright uh, confession. And, 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 and I, I have a couple of my friends uh, related to Lorenzen. And that was the first thing I saw when I got on social media, you know, uh, their outcry and, and uh, pain as a family. So I had to, you know, just send my condolences to them because it's been a long time. And then I watched the hearing uh, on the news and it was quite sad. It's a tragedy all the way around. You know, people want justice. And, you know, finally, I think the family can get some closure. 
uh, from that. And I think just for, it's a, you know, it's a black out for Memphis all the way around. You know, again, here we go again with, with, with that. And uh, it's just sad. But it, 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 it tells you that there needs to be like a lot of concerted effort for uh, couples, relationship, counseling. And all of these things, instead of people going through their trials without any help or into intervention, other than people saying, go to church and we're going to pray for you. You know, it needs to be really some some skills taught for counseling and marriage and conflict resolution and anger management and all those things. Because I bet you if that woman could take back uh Whatever it was that was going on, nothing will equal to his death to what you got to go through the rest of your life with your kids, your family, all this time loss. Because I'm sure they're going to sue her in civil court so she can't monetize off of this. She can't do no book deals, no movie deals, no nothing. Nothing. So it, it, it has to be some more done awareness being raised, just like they raised awareness for this opium epidemic. It has to be all hands on deck because domestic violence is out of control. Murder rate is out of control. Well, the, what? the what? issue is our people <laughs> have been through so much trauma. Who found this thing? That's my uh, thing, my thing catching up. I'll, let me turn my sound off. How you do this? Wait a minute, honey. This thing in my get, the, get your stuff together. Just, where's the sound button on this thing? All right. mm. It's somewhere. On. Here we go. I got it. Now. Our people have been through so much trauma, mm -hmm. and we have never gotten our trauma uh, properly medicated. And until we get our trauma medicated, we cannot get to the place where we need to be. Uh, emotionally, uh, spiritually, financial, all the above. We have to get the trauma taken care of because I was talking with someone. Uh, they was talking about their relationships. And so their boyfriend choked them, choked her the other day. And so he did it twice. So I started asking questions. And I'm okay. He didn't. He didn't. He didn't mean to do it. I'm okay. And blah blah blah. But later on, you go, if I go back rewind, they were abused as a child. So they're used to being abused. They're accustomed to it, and they think that's a sign of love. But like I told them, don't let nobody put their hands on you. You're too pretty. You're too smart. Don't let nobody touch you and hurt you like that. So once again, that trauma from a child, a teenager, now mm -hmm. as a duck has not been dealt with in a proper manner. And they think that's the norm because they've seen people, they've seen their family members, their mamas get beat up by the boyfriends. So that's the normal. And so our people have been through so much trauma uh, in that aspect. And like uh, David was saying earlier in the political aspect and uh, just, just abuse period. And so we have to be intentional on helping our people overcome the trauma that we have gone through because if we don't, the cycle will continue. It will continue. It will continue. It will continue. And so that's why it's so important to have programming for people to reach back once they get their freedom to help other people who are not being free. I know. And, and, it, and it has to be like uh, I was talking today. I went to see our young Van Zandt Wednesday uh, at the Canada Center. Uh, she was awesome. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Uh, but Memphis was so dry. <laughs> and I know the end, you know, when you're performing or you're talking in front of people as a speaker, you know, the energy is like what really kind of make you hit your stride when you're talking. Mm -hmm. And then when you're talking in front of people and they just sitting there looking at you like you're crazy and, you know, not really responding or giving you that energy back, you know, it makes you fall flat sometimes. Mm -hmm. And unless you just feel like pumping and priming them. But, you right. know, for her coming out, it was just, it, it wasn't, it was like on a decibel of 10, I think we might have hit a five. And the loudest they got probably was an eight. Mm -hmm. And I, I just kind of, it made me think like, are we that behind her in this city that we're not informed with people of, of that statue when they come to town? And I had a couple of people didn't even know who she was. Like, you don't know who Ayala Van Zandt is? Fix my life <laughs> on network. <laughs> but you can tell me everybody on the, the Atlanta Housewives. And the Amigos. Yeah, you, you can tell me who was fighting last week on the reunion. Really? Oh, okay. 
So I was like, wow. But what that what that was like telling me and she talked and she just went down through through just I know for two hours you can't just it's only so much you could talk about, but she worked out of the act of faith book and she just talked about um trauma and and things like that and she kind of shared some of her own trauma and i'll tell you this really quick so you'll get what i'm talking about so a lady said you know i want to be like you one day and she said oh really you want to be like me and really what she was saying was that um baby if you don't know i was married you know for been through abuse rape neglect been divorced three times uh as a child my, 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 I was raised by my dad's mom who used to beat me, you know, out of all the kids, just take her to work with her. They, she was a domestic, uh, uh, a maid and Ayala was working with her ironing clothes, you know, for the people that they work for. And she talked about what she found out about her grandmother. The one that used to beat her was that she was raped at nine by the sharecropper son who her, who they lived on the farm and sharecropper. And her father beat her when she came home and told him that the sharecropper son had raped her because he said she was in an area that she shouldn't have been in. But because he couldn't defend her because he was on a white man land sharecropping. But that started her downfall, her abuse. So she, her grandmother was just, she said, this angry lady all the time. Never smiled, never did anything. And so imagine you nine years old, you come home, you've been raped. And then you get beat for being raped by your daddy instead of defending you. But he couldn't defend her. And that kind of went, was like her story. It went on and on and on. But she said she didn't know that those things, that her grandmama endured those things until she got older and then heard her grandmama's story. But up until that point, she suffered at the hands of the abuse of the grandmama because the grandmama suffered at the abuse of her father. So we have all this abuse, 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 abuse go on. And probably it goes on to them being abused by the the slave masters. Well, it's a such thing as um, generation cycles. Mm -hmm. um, you know, you have to be careful with the curse and all that stuff. But I do believe in generational cycles and uh, patterns that continue that are good and bad. And mm -hmm. so... Um, we have to uh, be yeah, conscious of those things. And so it's just important to, like I said, deal with the trauma that people have, get help, <laughs> and try to become a better person. But we were talking about uh, people being brainwashed, and that's a big cause of people being brainwashed. It is. The trauma. Mm-hmm. And, then, you know... It's just sad, and then we were talk. We was trying to tie the racism and the trauma and all that stuff together, and you know. Well, Jimmy Carter said something. He said he was losing his religion, mm -hmm. you know, because of inequality for inequality, mm -hmm. and he walked away from the. I think it's a Southern Baptist church mm -hmm. he'd been a member of, mm -hmm. and he talked about them still teaching a religion that keeps people subservient to men mm -hmm. and white people. Mm -hmm. And like how what they teach about women, mm -hmm. still using the Old Testament scripture, mm -hmm. still having doctrines in the church that forbid women from preaching and becoming ministers and mm -hmm. things like that. Uh, how they oppress the LGBTQ community. They teach segregation mm -hmm. uh, subliminally. So he talked about losing his religion this week, walking away from that organization. He can't be a part of it anymore. And I was like, wow. You know, Jim McCall is like, what, 80? No. How? Older? A thousand. <laughs> so I said, you know what? Good for you, Jimmy Carter. You know, good for you. Uh, it's it's going to take people like that with privilege to take a stand. And, and you know, so you have this uh, understanding of theologic, theology liberation. And I think that's probably was instrumental to your unleashing and your freedom. Well... Uh, James Cone is, is, is resting in heaven in the bosom of uh, God right now, but he's a theologian and he uh, coined uh, black theology, liberation theology, and he said that racism was and is America's original sin. And the only way to respond to 
that original sin mm -hmm. is repentance. And America and the people who are in charge, and this is to white America, uh, white privilege America, you have to respond to that original sin by repenting and recognizing and acknowledging that racism is real and that's the original sin of this nation. And until we did that, do that. Uh, re repentance means that dying to the whiteness, that white God that you all created, that, that, white, that white Bible that you wrote, that white uh, uh, ideology that you talked about and wrote and coined, it has to die because if that doesn't die, we would never be liberated. And until you are liberated and you let that stuff die in your head as an individual, that's the only way you can become liberated because that's the core of your gospel. That's the core of everything you believe in. And you have to be liberated as an individual and have that door open in order for you walk through another door. So people, black folk, got a lot of liberating to do. And, but they have to understand doctrine, the difference between doctrine and the difference, difference between interpretation. Mm -hmm. So they, com they, they listen to interpretation and, and, and then digest that as the gospel truth. Mm -hmm. So you got to know the difference between interpretation and the truth. Yeah, because, uh, <laughs> because the, 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 James Cone focused on the oppression of the poor and the black people in particular. And those were the people that he dealt with, with in his work and the love of the oppressed and the divine passion for justice is at the heart of God. That's the core of God. God takes care of those. Just think about it. All the oppression and, uh, uh, the, the, the injustice that I go to my grandmother has gone through in her life and seen and so you got to think about that. She's gone through a lot in 80 some years. She said she used to pick cotton, been called uh, uh, the N word, had to wear shoes with cardboard paper underneath, walk here and there, been abused, been raped. That's all this stuff has happened to her in her time. So just imagine the stories her mama told her. And so she heard the stories of her mother being an actual uh, working all day long. More than eight hours a day for a dollar and how much she said a dollar and twenty five cent I think or maybe a dollar I don't know you know it's that's crazy you work all day and picking some damn cotton yep for the white man in a field and yep. my my great grandmother she looked like she was white my dear was so she looked like she was white and she's out there and picking cotton all day long for a dollar and America won't don't want to these these privileged white folk don't want to admit and repent for the original sin that they have done to our people and the hurt and the trauma they have caused our people. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to admit to it. Oh, yeah. It, you know, it's something else. And Then you have, oh, you can talk after this. Okay. Hitler Trump tweeting the way he treat, or tweets on Twitter, <laughs> talking about black folk. <laughs> Disgusting. Rat wrote, using all those in the window terms. But he really want to say nigga. That's what he really want to say. I believe he's going to say it before he That's what he office. really want to say. <laughs> Yeah, I believe you. Go back to where you come from, all that stuff. You know, that matter of fact was a guy on CNN crying the other day, the commentator. He was trying to, he was talking about the story. He started crying, the black guy. Who? Uh, the I, bald head one? Yeah. Uh, he always cry. No, nah, they don't cry. But the glasses? Yeah. I know who you're talking about. He Ooh, cried. I can't yeah, think his I've name. got his name. He cried when, when, when he said no, when Donald Trump said no human wants to live in Baltimore. But enough about that. But my point is this all that stuff tied together. And then you have black folk fighting against each other. And you got these, I'm going to use uh, Rick Thompson word, these handkerchief preachers, handkerchief Negro preachers who <laughs> will support Donald Trump solely because of LGBT marriage and equality right here in this city. Mm. They they would go against whoever the Democrats. It was like Van Jones. No, nah, nah, it was him. They would go against anything that the Democratic Party pushed in the primary, support Trump solely because Trump is against uh, marriage equality and need Negro preachers in the city will support that. I have no respect for, for half of these black pastors in this city. None. Ooh. If they don't talk about equality and liberating people, I have no respect for them. Well, you know, uh, that's like the hypocrisy of that position. And, you know, they will, they will only go as far on the margin to say, uh, diversity and inclusion is women and black people. Mm -hmm. And then anything else fall off the margin. 
So they'll go that far, but they won't make sure that this is part of whatever they're saying that they stand for. And, you know, you see it time after time. They do it behind closed doors, but they won't do it publicly. But that's, you know, that's like also uh, one of the regression of of our community being moving forward, especially in this state, Tennessee. Yeah. You know, they should be really pushing the margin in Memphis, Tennessee. Uh, if, no, if nowhere else, it should be really pushed. And uh, so, you know, it just kind of, you know, it just, you sit there and you watch. I watch CNN. I watch these people defend this man. I watch them tour with um, impeachment, all of these things that, you know, on the table and, you know, what they're going to do. And, you know, what are they going to do? The Democrats are in bad shape. Well. You know, they in bad shape. They I, in I, bad shape. I appreciate the speaker's wisdom. She's a very smart woman, but she should not be in charge of the be the minority speaker for the Democrats because she's afraid uh, of the repercussions of the impeachment. Hey, either way it go, he may win if you impeach him or if you don't impeach him. But at least I would say under my leadership, we impeached him and he won because of that. Instead of not impeaching him, and he still win. <laughs> yeah, he called the Democrats sick. Yeah, so go ahead and impeach him, and if he wins, he wins. But guess what, y'all? We impeached him. But they know that it's going to pass the, the House, but it won't pass the Senate. That's fine. We'll, but, we'll still impeach him. So I just, it it, it, it just extends. It's like it's like a virus, and it's just spreading. And it's spreading, and spreading, and spreading. You see uh, post after post, you know, with people in line, and white people walk right up and get in front of them and, and ask out you to help, and, you know, just kind of stupid stuff. Uh but I'm just waiting because I'm going to lick you. Well, it's just sad. Mm -hmm. But this this is another thing also we have to realize is now this is the time for black folk to come together. If we do not come together. I don't know why you keep saying that. If we don't, hey, we're in trouble. Y'all might as well get ready and get a, a, another. Uh, get a bunker. Do something because <laughs> they're going to let it smack down. If Donald Trump get back in the office these next four years, oh, he's going to let it smack down. He already doing it. No, he really gonna lay it. Okay, so he got the border wall, right? He got the border wall. He got no, no, no. It's a lower court said that when he um, declared a state of emergency, he could not pull that money from the military budget. So it's still dangling in a lower court, a federal, not a federal lower court. Uh, uh what do you call the courts? The circuit court. Oh. It's still in a, it's in a circuit court. That money, that that two point five, that the Supreme Court. Uh, awarded to him or said he could use it's in a lower court circuit court that said that he could not pull it so they can say no then that goes to the supreme court so right now he ha he's not been cleared 100 percent for that 2.5 billion dollars that he's gonna waste on the wall when he said that baltimore is one of the worst cities in the nation and that money could go towards that rat infested rodent city that donald trump says elijah cummings should be working on but we have a caller Call you live on the live show on KWAM 990 Talk Radio. What's on your mind? Hi, is this Skeeter? I think your, your nickname is Skeeter. You must really, really know me calling me Skeeter. Well, I heard your mom call you Skeeter. Oh. Yeah, that's where I got that from. But it's uh, David Clemens or something, right? It is. Send a donation to DavidClemens.com. D-A-V-I-N-C-L-E-M-O-N-S.com. And when you heard me say Skeeter. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeah, I, I just like your personality. You're crazy. Um, but so Donald Trump, I feel that we'll win again because he's got Russia on his side. That's just my opinion. I don't care what we do or what they do, what who does what. I think he's going to win. He has who on his side? Russia. Russia. The hacking. Of oh, the yeah. Yeah. They said that. that they were all in Florida. They were talking about that the other day that. They know that they tampered with those machines down in those the district with yeah. a lot of delegates. Yeah. And Russia, Russia is a lot smarter than us, it appears. We're fighting amongst each other and mm -hmm. just losing focus on what we need to. So mm -hmm. I really feel like it's destined that he's going to win again, and he knows that he's assertive about it. He's positive, and, and I, it's just, I, I don't know. It's not the uh, people can't still try, but I think it's, you know, it's, it's pretty much over. And Russia is going to make sure that he wins because he's a puppet. Well, let me say, let me say, you said the word, you said the word destined. It's not destined that he wins. And remember, 
we did not vote last time. I know many, many, many people who did not vote for her. They said, I'm not going to vote for him or her. I'm just going to stay at home. And so I feel if we do our part, everything else will take care of itself. Why do you think Russia is interfering? Because they know if we do our job, they have to interfere. Well, what? see, it's, it's like they have, they're so they're advanced to where if we get, went out in the, well, if, if people went out in the numbers, I mean, extreme numbers, mm -hmm. they're going to have some kind of way to knock it down. I, I just, that's the way I feel. It's like they, well, I, I was reading an article the other day that said that they knew that this would be the destruction of the United States. That's yeah. why they were behind uh, putting Trump in office to tear right. the United exactly. States down, not to, exactly. you know, for him to do anything in their favor, but just to wreck us, you know, like what That's we see sense. now, because we're, we're like one or two things from having a race war. Like a yeah, really that's, that's, race war with people killing each other, literally running in the streets and shooting. We that yeah. we're that close to like having probably another civil war in our country. And so, I mean, it's like they they made sure it happened so we can trip over ourselves. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's it. I agree. So, I mean, I'm just saying, yeah, true enough, true enough. We can go out there, or they can go with you know, the people or whoever you're voting for. You can go out there and vote for who you want to opposing Trump. But the Russians, they, the Russians, they have something in place that's going to even supersede or override that. That's the way I feel. Well, I'm, let me just... let me come at you now. Who's who's okay. in charge? Who's in charge of this country? Russia or the God who's delivered us through all that's... the things we have gone through in our lives? And we've we've that's seen God. we've seen worse than Russia. Keep in mind. That's true. So we've we we we've had strange fruit hanging from trees. We've been on boats. We've had Emmett Till uh, shot in the head, thrown in the bottom of the water. We've ha we've been through some With traumatic things. The found fifty pound fan hung around his neck. Yeah, so, fourteen years old. So what I'm saying I is this: careful. what I'm saying is this. Even though Russia may have the system or the key to the the, the system, I know somebody who can overturn that key, overturn Russia, make this thing go in our favor. I just felt something. So I'm not worried about Russia. I'm I'm gonna Me do do, am I. do do your part. Encourage people to press that button, and we're going we gonna, to – now, this is the time when our people need to humble themselves, come together, turn from our wicked ways, and then we'll see God. And I want to ask you, I'm going to come at you. Okay? All right. All right. And I know that power, power that you're speaking of. Mm -hmm. What is that higher, higher power's will is for Trump to get back into office for whatever reason? Well, let me say this. We, if, if, if it's God's will, it will happen. <laughs> And we can't do yeah. no, we can't do nothing about God's Amen. will. So, Bye -bye. Right there. yeah, that, yeah. So we can't do nothing about God's <laughs> will. And, God, and sometimes God's will is crazy. Yep, it's and, crazy. It's and very. The, and sometimes it's, it all things uh, work for the greater good. It's working our favor, whether he's in there or not. Because one thing that it, it has done with him being president, it has waken a lot of people up to become involved in politics they would never ever watch a presidential debate or yes. anything like that yes so people normal ordinary people that have no interest in politics now have become a uh, political savvy yes you know they want to vote they want to get involved and making young people get involved so there has been some good that came out of this i'm going to be like lady d on that note i'm going to say this there's there's always a positive that can be um, extracted from a negative. Yes. You know, sometimes. So I'm just going to say that, and y'all have a good weekend. Hey, well, you thank too. you for calling in. David, you got two minutes. Well, we made it to our time. If you are available on uh, Wednesday, July 31st, we're going to do some phone banking, banking at the headquarters, 516 Tennessee Street, Suite 418. That's Team Clemens headquarters. And starting, uh, I think, August the 5th or 4th, that first Monday in August. The headquarters will be officially open five to six days a week, eight hours a day. So we're going to get on the ball and turn this thing up a notch. So, hey, look, go to DaveAndClemens.com, click on the button, donate, send me some suggestions, make some comments, read over our policies, look at our website. But we in this thing to win it, and we ain't scared of nobody. Go to DaveAndClemens.com, D-A-V-I-N-C-L-E-M-O-N-S. I see y'all Wednesday at the phone bacon. Pick up your TUV magazine. Bam! We about to get out of here, y'all. Subscribe at TUVMAG.com.
You ain't never heard a show like this. Wanna keep it real like this. Wanna play nothing but hits and promote positiveness. Hey.